and welcome boys and girls today we are going to be speaking with Swapnil Kumar who is such a dear friend and somebody who I've kept bumping on in my car he is incredibly gifted as a speaker and as a teacher but beyond that he also happens to know a lot about marketing and innovation and has worked with big brands like you know Unilever and Royal Enfield and, and stuff like that I feel privileged to call him my friend but today, besides giving him uh, the short shrift on introductions, I just thought today's just two things was around his favorite area of marketing. So what's the topic that we have in store today, right? The topic is content versus context, because I think that most marketers miss the point, miss the bus over here and do not understand the importance of the context in the content. And I've got a few questions that I want to ask Swapnil about this specific thing because I think he's pretty good at explaining where he thinks we go wrong. So Swapnil, question number one. Welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and Sid, uh, absolute pleasure. And you've been too kind by saying all of those nice things, though I completely agree with you that... Um, by the way, I know a few things about marketing. I would never say I know a lot. Time flies when you're having fun. And so here, the let's have some more fun with the first question of mine. Swapnil, most marketers get the sequence wrong, don't they? It's like uh, you spoke about a few questions that uh, marketers should have in mind. Like, you know, and I would like you to tell me a little more about uh, the who and the what and the why and the when and I don't know what, but can yeah. you explain? how we should be thinking about the marketing process for context we all we all when we do our marketing and when we go talk to our bosses and everyone everyone says that you do the uh, the the wh or the 5w1h or whatever uh, fancy terms people come out with yeah uh, in terms of asking that question which are as you said uh, who why when where what and how right but i think the the challenge that happens, and it happens more often than not, is the fact that people start with the what and how before asking the who and why. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is where, as you said, I agree with you that the sequence goes wrong. Now, I don't blame a lot of people for this uh, because the, the what and how is, if I may use the term, the shiny part. Yeah. Mm. And we are all cats chasing lasers. Right. Mm. So, so the what and how is the shiny part. Yeah. Doing this on this amazing new medium that people have gotten to uh, doing this on in a very fancy way. Right. So everyone and their uncles in the in during COVID times were making dance videos on songs and concepts and stuff like that. Not to say that that's wrong. My only point is it's the sequence. Mm. I believe that the who and the why. Yeah, needs to be answered before the what and how, simply because once we are very clear on the who and why, our what and how will have a significantly higher probability of success. As much as we love to do creative stuff, we need to be efficient and effective. So speak more about who and why, uh, so that so that we get it. It's basically in 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 a in a very uh, so to speak non marketing language is to say. Who do I really want to mean something to? Mm. Yeah. So targeting is saying I am not the same brand or the same offering for everyone. But for a few people, I will mean a lot of things. And these are the people who will choose me. During one of my job interviews, I was once asked saying, so, so you used a lot of jargons. What else do you know? And I spoke a few more. And then he said, we are done with jargons. Now let's talk English. So there was a... <laughs> At some point in time, right in the beginning of my career, bringing this discussion back on the topic, it's important to understand who would want to buy my product or offering or service or whatever one may talk of. And why should they be choosing me? Yeah. So there is that whole point of being relevant for someone, being differentiated for that someone. And then at the last moment, and that's where the what and how will actually have a huge part to play, becoming salient for that someone. At the moment of purchase, am I choosing 
you versus someone else so before we get into the 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 second part of the equation i just wanted to understand a couple of things one is how uh, i mean how how does who and why actually um be missed so much by marketers is it why is it tempting w what do you think is going on internally is it because it's abstract or is it because it's laziness or what is it i think the sizzle tends up be tends to be a lot more exciting than the sausage mm. Mm. yeah it's as i said we are all cats chasing lasers doing mm. a great viral campaign doing a great campaign and making a very fancy video about it is where the excitement lies but the real job is in actually sitting down and saying hey i have to do the dirty work i have to understand the reality and then yeah. saying what will work uh, for how, someone how long how long do you think a marketer should spend let's say percentage of time uh, if i if i have 100% how long should a marketer spend on the first two questions honestly uh, all the time that a marketer has when they're not thinking of the what and how uh, is so is is where this why and who that's that's honestly your everyday job mm. yeah uh, when i when i'm on campus and talking about uh, the course that i talk about uh, the big part of my focus is always on saying you need to understand your brand and a critical part of understanding your brand is you need to understand your consumer Hmm. and then be able to differentiate what my brand is and what my brand isn't which is again just going back to who am i talking to and why should they be buying me and and this is what needs to be done over and over again because consumers change uh, their attitude towards brands change and this also happens when clutter increases it's as simple as that yeah consumers don't have time we marketers love our brands consumers don't love they love our brands but they don't have the same time energy and focus as we do right okay. so work on heuristics they 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 don't they don't have the same time and and that's true for us as consumers when when we wear that hat we are okay. different okay so let's assume that you've got the first two sorted you you are continuously thinking you seem to have a fair picture and now let me ask the second question uh, which is which is about the other two in the sequence um but i want you to speak also about the content versus context that you spoke about at this point in time uh, because i think a lot of marketers miss that so uh, th that's my second question can you explain the second part of the sequence i i am again reminded of uh, a boss of mine at some point in time who used to say that context eats content for breakfast <laughs> uh, and the point again that he was also focusing on was the fact that fundamentally if the who and why which is the context of where uh, and and i'll subsume where also there because once you know who they are why they should be buying you then you also know yeah. where to kind of grab them. the the point is that if that is clear your ability to bring out what will be done becomes that much easier because it's connected through and through and therefore it ends up making a lot more sense uh, to consumers yeah it is then that content takes over and and make and let me not kind of uh, mix my words and then make no mistake content is critical yeah so you can't really say hey just because i got my context right bad or below average content can actually do the job to maximize the mix you have to get them both right but your ability to get the content right becomes a lot easier yeah um we do not make viral content it becomes viral because you get the things right and there are and there are multitude of examples of how people get the context right and because of that content uh, uh becomes right in my during my time at royal enfield i think uh, i i saw this being done day in day out the 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 point to say this is why a consumer would choose my brand this is what i uh, uh kind of lend myself to and therefore how we'll do it i'll i'll give you uh, one of the last pieces of work uh, that i was uh, privileged to be a part of which was the launch of the 650 cc motorcycles in the market right now to give you a context of where the market was the fact was that uh, that that 2 and 1/2 lakh plus plus price point markets uh, uh, 
motorcycle market was less than about 900 units at that point in time so the total market across all players uh was was about 8000 to 9000 motorcycles per annum hmm. and these motorcycles came into the market and in the first year itself uh, these motorcycles sold more than the combined market uh <laughs> combined market that used to exist at that point in time wow. now if i go back into the history or or the journey of what was done the journey started by saying what role with these motorcycles play for the consumer hmm. Mm-hmm. it started by saying who will this consumer be yeah. yeah and the biggest pool of people who would want to upgrade to a bigger motorcycle a 650 cc would be a person who's today at a 350 cc who wants more if from a point of view of what they want to experience from their motorcycles yeah so what and- i notice is that you've gone back to the first two questions and and you're uh, emphasizing that because i think that's what you got right before you went to the next part absolutely the first question that comes to my mind when i see the the how and and, and the latter part of the sequence is uh, you must be dealing as a, as a brand manager somebody on the brand side with a lot of agencies right yes and so you need to be sort of a unifying force but yet allow the person to do their magic uh, on that medium How, can you speak about that a little bit as to how you manage it how you deal with something like that for me the biggest amount of work needs to happen with the planner yeah for me this journey starts by me writing the right brief have i briefed them and thrashed the the brief out with the planner because that person is going to create uh, the the picture for the creative guy to generate the output for so for me i think that's where the maximum amount of work happens even today when we answer the question of why we are doing this we will also know the parameter of success and that's where uh, the story actually starts right so okay. so and 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 for me i think that has that has stayed or uh, stayed true to the test of time whether it has been in fmcg or or now uh, or or uh, uh, lifestyle automobile or now in in fmcg still but alcobev uh, that's that's where it happens so the the question that i i don't start by saying uh, let's do something on tiktok hmm. my question is is tiktok relevant as a medium for that this is the final question now as yourself right you would be excited into getting into activities like yeah there's this community yeah the, you know there's a great idea that this agency is pitched how do you manage your own mental state of because i know you're a coach so uh, one of the things that uh, you know you can speak about is how do you manage the marketing mindset of the brand manager when they are going to start a campaign or start something really uh, what is it that you need to keep in mind uh i think i might sound like a broken record here but i think uh, a big part of journey is already done if you mm. if you answered the question on context and then the answered on content i think right? that so sort of takes care of itself is what you yeah saying. you've taken care of the why who where and what already now it's about how and i think the the only piece there is for all of us to keep our eyes and ears open to say mm-hmm. that if it is not responding the way it needs to respond then what is it that we can kind of change Yeah. Right, and and context and content pieces don't need to be earth-shatteringly big. Yeah, the 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 beauty of these things is that uh, uh, these can be very very small things, yeah. but uh, but but they can have a huge response. And I'm saying again, I'll go right back to the beginning of uh, my so to speak marketer uh, life <laughs> when I was on close up, right, and. Uh, and a simple simple thing of saying hey we we had a great piece of communication kya aap close up karte hain and the follow up on that were like amazing pieces of content right but a simple understanding of consumer context and what my brand's role in that was was this that close up is a brand uh, which goes into the household it's a household purchase it's not an individual purchase Yeah, that's if a toothpaste goes into a house everyone uses the same toothpaste sure. and toothpaste decisions and i'm talking well 15 16 years back but toothpaste decisions are made at the beginning of the month 
Mm. Right? Because it's a it's a part of your monthly ration. We don't believe in monthly rations anymore because of multiple other reasons. But at that point in time, monthly rations were important. So my job honestly was to say at that point in time when you're making a list or you're in the store to pick up a okay. toothpick, if I remember close up, I'll pick up close up. Yeah. And the whole game was that. Now, what did that translate into was that if there was ever a concern in terms of funding, hmm. our ad will play in the last five, uh, last last week of the month and first week of the month. So if I were to make a media plan on TV for 15 days, it will be between the 25th and the 10th. So the context because that's really the only time when you're looking forward to a salary or you've got a salary and therefore ration lists are being made. Lovely. Fantastic. That's the context. Apart from that, in the course of the month, you will not remember your toothpaste. It's a great yeah, example. I can feel very happy about the fact that kya up close up karte and I might it I might even have it as my phone jingle. Not the consumer. <laughs> toothpaste for them after if they wake up at six, after six, ten in the morning, toothpaste is irrelevant for the rest of the day. <laughs> That's how we Indian consumers are. I'm saying there are markets. I remember in Philippines, uh, even at that point in time, uh, a, a majority of the consumers used to brush their teeth after every meal. So oh, kids right. used to carry toothpaste and toothbrush in their school bags. Hmm. Right? That's so that's that's movie. who they are. That's yeah. And this is who we are. Right? Yeah. And, and and after 6, 10 in the morning, there's no role for a toothpaste. Yeah, I've seen right? some as long as I've got it into your purchase and... basket, your job is done. Yeah, I've seen some people not brush their teeth in the UK for days on end, but let's not get into that. <laughs> let's, let's... <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Swapnil. I think this has been really, really incredible. Just start, you know, shooting the breeze with you as, as a marketing uh, professional and somebody who has got an informed view on the subject. Uh, thank you so much for your time. What I have learned from this conversation are a couple of things. One is that the process of the, the first part of the sequence, you know, the why and, and the how seems to be going on all the time and refining itself. And that's one takeaway that I've got. The second takeaway that I've got is when I'm looking at uh, doing something contextually, I think timing becomes incredibly important uh, and, and using of pre-existing assets also becomes incredibly important. Like there is a community for Royal Enfield or the timing of the close of toothpaste. Both of these things are, are you know, a marketer should keep uh, the, their eyes and ears open in, in order to leverage really well. I think uh, fantastic as usual. Thank you so much. And we'll be having you more often, more times on different other topics, not just this Absolutely. one. Thank you. Cheers.